If I bleed tonight, if I am sad tonight, I don't have a job to find. And if I work tonight, if I'm so tired tonight, I'll fall asleep when I'm home, when I'm home. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Smallville Will. Welcome to another episode of Gun Day School. Sorry I've been away for so long. Things happen, stuff happens, some things change, things don't change. But you know the name of the game. It's all the same. So, today's episode of Gun Day School, we're going to go over this thing that's commonly referred to as rifle consistency. It's more specific to if you are a, pretty much when it comes to rifles, if you're a one trick pony. Like, I'm an AR-15 guy. That's my trick, all right? I don't really dabble into any other rifles. AR-15s are pretty much the standard bearer for me, okay? So I'm gonna be referring to this stuff solely on the AR-15 platform. Now you can transfer it over into other platforms that you are more versed with, that you find you're more comfortable with, but you know, cause you know, AR-15s may not be for everybody. You know, there are guys that are, that are rocking AK-47s. There are guys that are rocking uh, bolt actions, you know, stuff like that. All right, but I'm talking in AR-15 world right now. Okay, now, rifle consistency. To me, rifle consistency is a few things that you do to pretty much all your rifles across the board that have the potential to save your life, which is kind of a weird, subject there because every rifle has the potential to save your life all right now this thing called rifle consistency becomes a little more difficult if you are one of those guys that likes to make every rifle unique all in its own or if you're one of those guys who owns a whole lot of rifles then trying to you know do the whole rifle consistency thing becomes very expensive i don't own a lot of rifles I used to own a lot of rifles, but then I kind of sat back one day and I just looked at them and I was like, you know what? I really don't need all these, these rifles, which, you know, some people may say that's sacrilegious in terms of the second amendment, but Hey, it's my right to own all of them. It's also my right to not own all of them. Okay. So what I did was I just kind of streamlined all my rifles based solely on purpose, you know, purpose driven rifles. That's all I got. So today here, I, only, I have two of my rifles. I have, the AR-556 by Ruger, commonly referred to as Gene Simmons. And I have my work gun, which is a Frankenstein Spikes Crusader. All right. Now, the reason why I have these two guns and not, you know, my other ones, um, I only have, uh, I'm not even going to count my AR pistol. Um, I have three rifles. My hunting rifle is currently getting some work done. That's also in the AR-15 platform. So anything that's done to these weapons, you can pretty much believe that it's also done to those to the uh, AR-10 minus the optics because it's a hunting rifle. So I gotta have a hunt, hunter's optic on it. You know, nice nice size scope. Anyway, I'm gonna get into this. Now, what are the things that I think? you should do when it comes to rifle consistency. Well, anything that your body interacts with outside of the trigger finger, okay? Anything that your physical body interacts with with the gun outside of your trigger finger, because your trigger finger is going to be consistent no matter what weapon you pick up, all right? It just pulls, that's it. Everything else is gonna be determined based on how you have it set up and how it interacts with your body. So we're gonna get into this one, the first one. This is the Ruger AR-556, Gene Simmons. This buttstock is the Magpul CTR fixed stock. I'm not a big fan of um, collapsible or adjustable stocks because they kind of wobble a little bit and I could never get the length of pull right. But this one seems to be working for me thus far, so I'm, I'm gonna roll with it, all right? Now I say roll with the same buttstock on all your rifles or something similar. Not, you don't have to roll with the same one. I do it because it's easier, but you don't have to. Just if the buttstock feels the same when it comes to shouldering and when it comes to cheeking, okay? These are two points where your body is interacting with this rifle, shouldering and cheeking, all right? Because you wanna have something that feels the same. Say if this is my go-to gun for home defense and something happens to this gun and it's out of commission and all I have left 
is my work gun, all right? I don't wanna have to have the different buttstock on my work gun, it doesn't feel the same. Now, that may be negligible when it comes to like tenths of a second, but let's be serious. If you're in a situation to where you need to defend yourself, you pretty much want every millisecond to your advantage. I mean, that's just how I roll, all right? So, I got the Magpul CTR fixed stock on this one as well. Feels the same when I shoulder it, feels the same when I cheek it, all right? Can't really go wrong with that one. Now, the next thing we're gonna cover is the grip. This thing right here. Now, I'm not talking about palm swell. I'm not talking about, you know, what you can put inside the grip because there are grips like that. I'm talking about angle, okay? Because there are some grips that have different angles like this one here which is probably gonna get changed out here pretty soon, but the angle on this grip is not the same as the angle on my work gun. This is a Magpul SL grip. Pretty much all of Magpul's grips are around the same angle. You know, it's not the same angle as this one. You see here? You see that, you see that difference? All right, I like, I like steep angle grips because they, they give me the best grip without having to crank my wrist up on it. All right, when I crank, when I grab onto this one, you notice my, you know, the wrist is a little bit cranked there, but this one here, the wrist is not, all right? It feels a little bit more comfortable for me. You know, it may not be your cup of tea, but you know, it works for me, so that's why I roll with it, all right? So you wanna kinda have the same grip angle on all your rifles, because if you get into a situation you don't wanna have to subconsciously or unconsciously whatever you want to call it have to adjust your grip angle or get 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 right with your grip angle when you know stuff hits the fan all right now of course people are going to talk about like ambidextrous charging handles uh select lever switches mag releases things like that those are all um some pretty cool g whiz gadgets but you know they work if, if that's what you do like this rifle here is 100 100 completely ambidextrous i can operate this rifle from the from the right hand or I can operate it from the left hand no matter what you know everything is still within that grasp of me using either hand to pretty much function everything on the rifle this one not so much because this one doesn't go out with me anymore like it used to this one pretty much just stays in the house so it just has to be normal okay now after the grip angle we're going to go ahead and talk about optics angles or not optics angles optics placement Sorry about that. All right, now, if you'll notice this here, I have this optic here and this one. All right, notice how they are pretty much on par with the bottoms of the optics. Right there, all right? The bottoms of the optics is what you wanna look at because no matter, you know, if your cheeking is the same, if your grip angle is the same, your cheeking and shouldering is the same, it should be the same distance from your eye to the end of your optic, all right? So you want to be able to know that, all right, this is about, I'd say about eight, eight and a half inches from my, from my eye to, to the end of my optic, all right? Same thing goes for this one. It's about, you know, eight inches from my eye to my optic, all right? So I know, you know, if I shoot enough, fire enough, train enough, that about eight inches in is where my optic is gonna be. So that's where I'm gonna be looking for it, all right? You have different size optics. You guys run, you know, got guys that run optics up here. You know, guys run optics way up here. You got guys that run optics way back here. No matter what you do, you know, it, it's totally different because now, once you get into into firing, if your optic is way back here, it's like, oh, okay, there's the optic. You know, or if it's way up there, you're probably gonna have to take a little bit of time searching for it, you know? Now, if that's how you wanna, wanna run your optic, run your optic like that. I'm not telling you, you know, which way is wrong or right. But, you know, just be a little consistent on the placement of your optics when it comes to your rifles, 
Okay, so that's one thing that we have to go with on that one. Now, the next thing that we're going to touch on when it comes to rifle consistency is placement of the foregrip. All right, the foregrip, you know, pretty much they have different kinds of foregrips. They have angled foregrips, they have hand stops, they have grip stops, they have vertical grips like you know vertical stubby grips uh mid length vertical grips like this one they have all kinds of you know the broomstick grips from the back in the days they have all kinds of grips like that all right now i'm not telling you which grip to use we'll use whatever's comfortable for you but at the same time i am going to tell you to try to keep it on par if you notice here these two vertical grips are roughly on the same plane when it comes to you know, mirrored image of each other, roughly, you know, give or take a few millimeters here and there or whatever. All right. Now, something that you may also notice is that this grip is a little bit further back behind the front sight base than this grip is. And the reason for that is because I have a law tactical folding stock adapter on this one, which adds about an inch point three to the length of pull. Okay. Now, just because I added some to the length of pull doesn't mean that my arm mechanics change when it comes to where I'm going to start grabbing for the grip. All right. I add an inch to the length of pull with the law tactical adapter, which means I'm going to have to bring this back an inch. All right. Because that's where I'm more comfortable with the grab. All right. Now, of course, you know, I could grab up here, but this is more for um, fast acquisition and reacquisition of targets and everything like that. Normally, if I'm shooting, I'm usually shooting like this, you know, coming around here, doing my thing like that. All right. Now, a good gauge to determine where to put your optic is to grab, grab your gun, preferably not a heavy one. You know, you see how I got it resting on my knee? It's because I'm lazy and old. You can probably do this like me when you get my age. All right. Grab your gun, shoulder it, cheek it and close your eyes. With your eyes closed, you want to go ahead and raise your offhand. All right. See that there? Have the gun shouldered. Cheek it like you normally do. Close your eyes. Raise your offhand. All right. Do that about six or seven times. You do that about six or seven times. That should give you a good gauge on where you need to keep the gun or where you need to place your foregrip. All right. Same thing with this one. You know, I have, I don't have to worry about different butt stocks or anything because hey same butt stock right so it feels the same when i shoulder it when i cheek it and i go ahead and raise my hand all right I'm telling you do that about six or seven times and you will figure out a good place for you to put your optic or not your optic your foregrip when the time comes for you to do that yeah it's hot and i'm drinking a beer and so there are other things that goes into rifle consistency, like, um, you know, some people may want to throw muzzle devices into rifle consistency, but you know, uh, this, this one here is about to become, I think I have plans to make this one into a dedicated 22. So the muzzle device that I have for this one will be wasted if I was to put it on this one as a 22. You know, um, my 308 has a muzzle device dedicated for a 308 round, which means it's not really a device, it's more of a break. I might even get that one suppressed. So muzzle devices are somewhat negligible. Um, another thing that goes into rifle consistency that would probably make you a better shooter um, comes into uh, to light placement, you know, where you're gonna put your lighting at. Now I have my lighting all the way up here on my gun, but I also have it as a pressure switch back here. All right, so I could activate it like that. Now, this is the only gun that I have my light on. This will be the only gun that I probably use in a home defense situation where light is very important. You wanna be able to identify your target before you go start mixing metal with meat, all right? This one, not so much. Now, in the event that it does get used as a home defense, like in a pinch or if that off chance pops up to where I have to use it, okay, I might even jump into that one. But any weapon that you may use for home defense, if you don't have a weapon designated for home defense, or if you have a weapon designated for home defense, you know, like I say, if you don't have a weapon designated for home defense, but you know that you may end up grabbing one of them, whichever one that you think you may grab needs to have a light on it. 
If you have a designated home defense weapon, it needs to have a light on it, okay? That's pretty much how it rolls when it comes to lighting and things like that, you know. Um, what else goes into rifle consistency? Uh, that's pretty much it, man. Um, I don't really have a lot going on with rifle consistency. Like I said, I don't have a lot of rifles. I just have a few rifles that are purpose driven. Um, so it's easy for me to keep those rifles consistent. You know, pretty much all of these rifles, minus a few, you know, the optics and, and the light on my, my work gun, minus that stuff, they all pretty much look and feel the same, if that makes any sense. All right. You know, I don't have a lot of rifles, so the ones that I do have typically do typically feel the same when I when I cheek shoulder hold and fire them, you know, when they interact with my physical being outside of my trigger finger. So that's what rifle consistency is to me. It may mean something totally different to you, but if you want to get into that, hey man, go ahead and let me know, you know, something that you think should be more consistent when it comes to rifles, something that um that you find doing to all your rifles makes you know you a faster shooter better shooter more consistent shooter whatever man i'm open to suggestions just don't be a douchebag okay we all in the same game baby it's all that second amendment love and we all just do what we got to do to survive and maintain our right unless you live in california in which case some of y'all need to go ahead and move because it, you, you, you'll see you'll see you'll, you'll start sucking sooner or later all right, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode of Gun Day School. Please stay tuned for the next video that I'm going to do. It's going to be a comprehensive table talk of my work gun. I'm getting a lot of questions about it. I'm working on the video. I'll get it done, um, and then I'll post it up. So don't throw bricks through my windows like Floyd Mayweather's girlfriend got a brick thrown through her window. Maybe if she lived in a state that had better gun laws, she wouldn't have that problem. You ever notice how states with, with, with real strict gun laws have all the problems? Like people doing stuff to other people. You, you, know, you know, an armed society is a polite society because nobody likes getting shot. At least I don't. I don't know what you guys are into behind closed doors or anything like that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and recap this real quick before I shut this bad boy down and go get me something to eat. Butt stocks. If you're not going to keep them the same, at least keep them to the point where they feel the same. Okay? Grips. I say maintain the same slope angle. You may say maintain the same palm swell, but I'm a steep angle kind of guy. All right? So that's how I kind of roll with my grips. I'm not really a steep angle kind of guy when it comes to ladies. Um, I'm more of a butt guy, so I need a little something back there. I'm not looking for the big monstrosity world star hip hop butt, but I need something there. I don't want that whole steep slope, like a, a slope so steep it looks like her, her hamstrings stop at the bottom of her shoulder blades. That's, that's, that's too, too steep, but you know, just something there, you know what I'm saying? You, you, we, we here, we here, all right? Optics placement. If you're running with red dot, or if you're running with a variable power scope, or even if you're running you know, with a regular scope on all your rifles, okay? Optics placement. You don't wanna have optic run way at the top near the muzzle, and then you have another rifle with the optics run, running right on top of the charging handle, okay? So you wanna keep it pretty much the same distance from your eye to the optic, so that way you know where you need how far you need to look to acquire that target through the scope or through the, through the tube. And foregrip placement, be it a vertical grip, an angled foregrip, a broomstick grip, a stubby grip, whatever you got, whatever you feel comfortable with, pretty much same placement, and you'd be good to go. Now, slings may get into that, but you know, there are guys who can get away with, like if you're tall, you can get away with uh, rocking probably a single point sling as opposed to somebody who's real short who probably needs to roll with a two point sling. So, you know, slings are very negligible. It's based solely off of the individual's comfort level and what they can get away with, all right? So that's pretty much it when it comes to today's episode of Gun Day School and Rifle Consistency. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, whatever you got, put them in the comment section below and I'll talk to you cool cats on the flip side.